Yes, yes, we've heard your requests. We get asked to cover many computers our fans are nostalgic for, but the Tandy TRS-80 color computer is a by far the most requested system we've ever had. And there's no better time to cover it than during Septandy, the month us computer geeks spend celebrating everyone's favorite computer and leather company, Tandy. Hi, I'm Jacob with Tandy Lab, and today we're doing it, folks. It's time for the color computer to have its time in the sun. Tandy Corporation had become one of the biggest retailers of computers in the United States, selling their legendary TRS-80 and variants starting in 1977. Thanks to their stellar marketing and major retail presence in their own Radio Shack stores, Tandy was able to become one of the three biggest computer brands competing primarily with the Apple II and the Commodore PET. However, by 1980, the computer industry had changed pretty drastically and it was clear that the 80s were going to be a very different decade for computers than the 70s. Prices were going down while power was increasing dramatically. Additionally, the focus for computers in general had shifted from DIY computer kits sold to hobbyists to recognizable brands selling low-cost computers to normal consumers with an interest in basic programming and playing video games. Computers went from being something found only in mail-in catalogs to being sold in normal retailers like Kmart and Sears. In this regard, Tandy had a huge leg up on the competition, being the market leader in technology sales. A lot of what Tandy had learned since the 1962 purchase of Radio Shack translated well to the computer industry, and many of their die-hard loyal radio enthusiast customers were ready to get into the new world of computers. To guarantee their continued success in the computer industry, Tandy knew they needed a new platform to largely replace the aging TRS-80 line, something consumer-focused, able to connect to a normal TV set and play great arcade games. That platform would come from a pretty strange source, the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture. Okay, okay, it's not quite that straightforward, but it's still funny to think that there's a link between Kentucky corn farms and this high-tech 80s computer. In 1977, the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture partnered with the Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service for Project Green Thumb, a project to create a low-cost video terminal for use by farmers. The idea was to offer farmers a way to check relevant day-to-day -day updates on climate and agricultural news by connecting a simple terminal to a phone line and a basic TV. The partnership selected Austin, Texas-based Motorola Corporation to develop the semiconductors for the terminal. And when it came time to select a manufacturer for the terminal, fellow Texas-based Tandy was selected due to their strong, long-term relationship with Motorola. Initially, the project ran into many hurdles as the many chips required would make the system prohibitively expensive. But Motorola solved this by combining many of the chip's functions into a single package called the MC6883 Synchronous Address Multiplexer, or SAM. The agricultural terminal was released in 1980 as the AgVision Video Text Terminal. It was sold in Radio Shack stores to minimal sales. Tandy and Motorola agreed its chipset would make a great home computer, so the design was recycled into the TRS-80 color computer, using the same components and case, though changing the glorious blue color, to the simply less cool, but still cool, gray. The modem was removed, and cassette, serial, and joystick ports were added, as well as an expansion slot on the right side for cartridges and accessories. The color computer would be announced on July 31st, 1980 and released two months later for $399, equivalent to $1,122 in 2020 money. Containing 4K of RAM and an 8 kilobyte ROM containing Microsoft Basic, it was advertised as a great starting computer. However, Tandy's focus with the system seemed 
confused. The system was clearly targeted at normal consumers by its design, but Ed Judge, the director of computer merchandising at Radio Shack, insisted that the computer was designed for use in the workplace. That doesn't make sense to me. Businesses in 1980 were looking for much more customizable machines running CPM, not say a low cost computer with TV connections and joystick ports. Although the color computer uses the TRS-80 branding, it is entirely incompatible with the previous Z80 based TRS-80s, but the Coco would receive a wide software library of its own. Software was initially sold on cassette or ROM packs, but later software was available on floppy disk. Despite Tandy's reluctance to market the Coco as a gaming platform, the line would become very successful as one, especially as prices decreased. The Coco was also one of, if not the best computers for someone looking for a low cost, full featured basic programming computer. Many people got their start in programming on one of these machines. It helps that it comes with an excellent basic manual. As early as 1982, Tandy was already receiving criticism for sidelining the Coco family and focusing on newer platforms. Tandy refused to sell third-party software in Radio Shack stores, which hurt the brand considerably. Most of Tandy's own software was just not as good as what third-party publishers and basement programmers were able to do. This is a great example of why buying into a computer platform could be very risky when they're new, since companies could abandon them at any time, leaving you high and dry. This is one major reason why IBM compatibles came to dominate the market. As time went on, the Coco would receive some pretty major upgrades from Tandy. All new retail units would come with these upgrades pre-installed from the factory. But if you were looking to upgrade a model you previously bought, you would have to take it to Radio Shack and pay for them to upgrade it for you, since opening your case at any time yourself would void the system's warranty. Some things never change. Our system is one of the later models. You can tell because the system sticker is centered, whereas on the original model, it was left aligned. And the casing surrounding the keyboard is silver instead of black. Our system contains a Motorola 6809E processor running at 0.895 MHz, 32 kilobytes of RAM, extended color basic, a 53 key chiclet keyboard with uppercase only text modes with 32 columns by 16 lines, eight graphics modes including 64 by 32 with eight colors and 256 by 192 with four colors, one RS-232 serial port and sound output with a six bit DAC. Our system is in pretty good condition. We bought this Coco complete in box for an unboxing video you can see here, the previous owner did puncture the security sticker to access the internals, which sadly voids our warranty. Oh well. On the front, you can see the centered Coco badge and the keyboard. On the right is the expansion port. On the back, you can see the reset button, which by the way, was quite the luxury back then. The TV out, channel selector, cassette interface, serial port, joystick ports, and power button. Tandy would continue the Coco line with the Color Computer 2 and 3, but they didn't necessarily replace the original Color Computer. Rather, it would remain on sale for years as many stores cleared out existing stock at bargain bin prices. However, Tandy would stop advertising the system in the mid 80s. The Coco line in general would last an impressive 11 years, with the Coco 3 being discontinued in 91, with many stores continuing to sell existing stock until 93 or 94. Now it's time for the ratings. Usability gets a 3 out of 5, largely knocked down to the only okay keyboard and the lack of a composite output, making it a bit harder to connect in the 21st century. Rarity gets a 2 out of 5, these are pretty common, and there's basically never a time you'll not find a few listed on eBay. Price gets a four out of five. You can find some great deals on this computer, but you may want to look at later models as well. 
Also, ROM cart software is becoming prohibitively expensive. Aesthetics get a five out of five. Both revisions of the Coco One are iconic systems with a pleasing color and smooth rounded edges. They hold up remarkably well. Fun fact, I would absolutely give the AgVision and its baby blue color scheme a six out of five. Software gets a three out of five. There is a fair amount of software available, but I can definitely imagine an alternative universe where Tandy had embraced third-party software rather than shun it, and we received two to three times as much software. Well, that's all we have today for our first video celebrating Septandy 2020. We've got some great videos in the works for you guys. Be sure to be uh, subscribed so you don't miss our look at the Color Computer 2, for example. And of course, join our Discord server so you can talk about your fond memories of this computer with me and all the other nerds there. And uh, if you'd like to help support us financially, uh, you can do so by supporting us on Patreon and you get access to videos like this one right here early. And we'll see you guys next time.